Networking, I find that networking and just going outside and meeting new people will take you so far. It will take you so far in life. So I try to incorporate that in my days, or at least once or twice within a week. Um, but a lot of it is just brainstorming, editing, filming, shooting, brand work. If I have sponsorships to do, you know, give on me. Yeah, um, and yeah, trying to strategize and figure out ways to extend my brand outside of just. Ah. Well, I don't know if I feel like I've necessarily made it, but I think, you know, there are certain situations that you look around and you say, wow, this time last year, I was praying and hoping for something like this. This time last year, I was praying for an Afro brunch, you know? Um, this time last year, I was telling my friends, oh, I'm going to have this event, but I don't know, and I sat on it for an entire year before I actually executed. So, I mean, I think... There are just these little goals and milestones that you hit one day and you don't even realize you hit it until maybe someone reminds you. And you're like, okay, I'm actually making strides. I'm making strides in this. And there's no, I don't know if there's any real time that I'll ever feel like I've made it. But as long as I know that someone is inspired and gets touched with what I've done or with what content that I've made, um, or someone made a new connection that really changed my career in my life, that, what was the strategy like from the inception up until now? Do you have like a three-day plan? This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Well, I mean, I never really planned for this to be my career. But at a point, there comes a time in your life when you do have to make that decision that, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is the career path that I'm on. And when I made that decision, I definitely had... Um, strategy meetings with myself to set some goals for myself because you know with entrepreneurship there's no manual right no one's telling you oh you have to do this by this time no one's telling you so how do you curate essentially your life path how do you do that um you start with baby steps and creating small goals for yourself so for me one day i looked at my instagram and youtube and i said i want to double in six months i want to double my following in six months which means I have to hit a certain amount every month or something like that, right? So you just kind of start tracking your following and start tracking what's working and what's not, you know? So you just become a little bit more intentional about the content that you do create. And that's what changed. That's what changed from when I first started being an influencer for fun and when I decided to make it a full-time gig that just really started being more intentional about the content that I created and being aware of what's working, what does my audience respond to, and what don't they respond to. And go from there. So the growth process on YouTube is quite difficult here, as opposed to Instagram. What was it like starting with zero subscribers and still trying to churn out content, then going from 5K to 10K, 220K, 250K, to <laughs> Well, I actually love that question because I think a lot of times we see Influencers are just people that we really admire. We see them and they have this really big following and you're just like, when did you get here? How do I get here? Like, it seems like the followers just magically appeared. But no, every single one of us are zero followers. Like, I remember when I had zero subscribers. I remember it so vividly, actually. You feel good about yourself, Luna. Sometimes I'm just like, wow, like I really <laughs> pray for this. That is me, thank God. <laughs> but, um, I remember exactly how I used to feel when I had like less than a thousand subscribers and I would post videos and it would get like 100. I remember, I remember it so well. Um, and I remember always thinking to myself, one day people are just going to watch my videos, man. One day, man, they're going to know who Chizzy is. And 
Sometimes you just have to dig yourself up like that. You have to motivate yourself. You have to curate a circle around you that will also motivate you. And I found that as you are in your path to success, you'll naturally, oh, God is so beautiful. He will align you with people that are on the same path, that'll motivate you, that'll help you out. And the key to getting to those people that will help you is you have to do as well. You have to make sure you're doing your due diligence and creating the content that you want to make. You know, editing, it's not easy. It takes a lot of time. So um, you just have to be motivated. You just have to be motivated, like it's easy, but that's really it. You gotta have that internal fire to keep going. And just know one day, one day I'm gonna sit on the stage and I'm gonna tell people how I remember when I had zero subscribers. Look at you now. <laughs> oh my God. How was it that transitioning from YouTube to Instagram? Because I've not been able to transition from Instagram to, to YouTube. YouTube. Nah. Yeah, the crossover between platforms is a tricky one because you'll think, oh, because I'm doing all right or very well on one platform, that it'll naturally translate to another. And sometimes it doesn't work like that. And for me, it actually didn't. Um, I had quite a large following on YouTube. And at a point, I had like maybe a thousand followers on Instagram. So, and I actually remember, and this is what made me even start being more intentional about focusing on Instagram. Someone had, I think I was doing a hair collaboration with a salon. And the stylist that was doing my hair, she saw my YouTube. I, I don't know how many I had, maybe 50,000, something around there. Um, so she knew what my YouTube was. And then one day, I, I guess I was showing her my Instagram. And she was like, oh, that's it? That's all it? That's the amount of followers you have? I was like, excuse me. Hold on. I didn't even know it was like, I didn't know I was supposed to have more followers on Instagram as well. But then it made me think, hmm. Why do I have 50,000 on YouTube and only 1,000 on Instagram? What I thought it just naturally translates, and it doesn't. You have to actually be intentional about creating content specifically for each platform that would work best on that platform. So a YouTube video is not gonna perform the same way if you post it just on Instagram the same way. Because on Instagram, you need shorter form content, whereas YouTube, longer form content does better. So you have to notice the trends for each social media platform and tweak your content up a little bit. It can still be the same content, but tweak the content so it works for each platform. So a major part of influencing marketing is the brand collaboration, yeah? Because that's where points are made. I mean, there's other ways to make coins too, this, but it's one of the ways. <laughs> one of them. So how was it like finding brands yeah. to work with and collaborate with? Okay, so for a long time I wasn't getting paid, <laughs> like a lot of people, right? Um, and when I decided I wanted to do this full time, I had to figure out, well, how am I going to pay for money? And um, through research, um, talking to other influencers, I realized one of the main ways to um, really build that capital or just make money off of social media is through working with brands and having sponsorships with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at first, most times, once you start creating these videos and you have somewhat of a following, they'll reach out to you. Maybe it'll be a hair company, and you know, for a while, that was okay with me. I said, they won't send me hair. And I just wait, and you'll pay me. Fine. Um, but after a while, you know, you want to start curating more partnerships that really resonate with your audience and resonate with you as well. And I think there's so much power in pitching. And pitching is basically reaching out to these brands yourself. Because the work that's coming in, brands that are emailing you, that's only 50% of the opportunities that are coming. The other 50% are the ones you have to go out and get yourself. Look for brands. So I really put an emphasis on reaching out to brands now and creating that media kit where it's basically a snapshot of your analytics, so it's your demographic, your followers, your viewership, where do people mostly watch your videos because brands really want to know, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, creating that media kit, sending it out to these brands, letting them know, hey, I love this, I have X and X amount of followers, and I think a partnership between my brand and your brand would really resonate with this audience. Take a look at my media kit, let me know if you would love to work together. Sometimes I'll just DM the brand and ask them for a PR contact, 
or someone that works with influencer marketing so I have the right email that I'm even sending to them. Uh, but yeah, definitely reaching out to brands and tagging the products that you naturally use so that these brands can start to see you a bit more and get more visibility and be more on their radar. I kind of have that fear of reaching out to brands because they start asking questions like, um, what do you really have to offer? No, should I reach out to you? Like, some brands I reach out to feel like if you are the one reaching out to them, they kind of look down on you for some reason. I don't know why. Well, everything is also a cultural thing as well, so maybe something that doesn't work um, in America maybe not, may not work as much in Nigeria. So, and I don't really know the landscape of, well, Ima gave us a little bit of an idea of what that is like here in Nigeria. Um, but for me um, and my experiences, for the most part, brands are pretty receptive because um, usually I'll come with an idea and I'm letting you know these are my stats. It's not like I'm begging you to work with me. I'm saying this is what I have to offer. These are a lot of followers, this demographic. So if I'm reaching out to a beauty brand, beauty brands are mainly targeted towards women, right? Yeah. Um, let's say it's a certain product that is specifically to black women. I know that most of my audience are women, and I know that majority of these women are black women based off of my analytics data. It's hard fact. So if I'm sending you all these facts, and if it aligns with your target audience, then I'm just doing you a favor and letting you know, <laughs> and you know, taking off some of that vet work that you have to do trying to figure out which influencer would work best for your brand. Um, and if a brand does not appreciate that, then what's it that's not nah, okay, because there's always someone else that will see your value. And not every brand will see it, and that's okay. It's a vlog inside a vlog. <laughs> Say hi! Hello. You guys, I have a Canadian vlogger here with me. It's the Alma Chronicle! It's me, it's me, it's I. In, in the, the flesh! <laughs> In the flesh. What know? is one thing that you thought about me when you saw me? Because a lot of people see me, and the first thing they're like, "You're so short." Yeah, I thought you were think taller. I, I thought you were taller. Look, you guys, angles. And I wear heels. Angles is key. <laughs> me and my photographer, we have perfected really? the joy of angles. You have Everybody a photographer. Is. You work with all the time. Yeah, I have one photographer. It's just, it's just the best because I can't have like different photographers learning my angles all the time. To be honest, and the way you like your pictures to come out. Exactly. Oh, this camera is actually nice, yeah. Like it looks. Camera, iPhone. Anyway, so yeah, I'm signing out. I'm going out to my friend's house, and then I think I'm going to go to dinner afterwards. Okay, say bye. Make sure you, you guys follow to me. Channel and follow, follow me on Instagram. Instagram. I also have a blog. It's the Alma Chronicle. At the Alma A L M A Chronicle. That's a Boy, shameless I'll write blog. It. I'll write it down. Such a shameless blog. I'll write it down. Right. So yeah, bye. Hi guys, so I just got home from Chizidru events. Like I had another event after. It is 20 minutes to 11. It's been a busy day. My new Bum Beauty foundation looks good. Looks good, looks good. Looks really good. And it doesn't feel cakey. It doesn't feel heavy or anything. So I'll just show you what was in the goodie bag. Because it makes a lot of sense. There's this tangle teaser. Kiki. I've actually never used a tangle teaser, so I'm quite excited for this. This is a tangle teaser detangling hairbrush for all hair types. There is a satin bonnet. And I'm sorry from Isokin, Glam by Isokin. I like the print, it's like a printed print. Quite big. Nice, nice. There is some um, pre cleanse lip detangler from Diva Curl. It's a wash day wonder, it's a treatment. Apparently, it not tangles away before cleansing. It's a new way to detangle. Anyhow, looks interesting. I have quite a lot of hair products in my life already. So, we'll see. There is Neutrogena. Pink Grapefruit Acne Prone Skin Activated Cream to Foam Cleanser with Micro Bubbles that cling to dirt and oil for a complete clean. I haven't really used Neutrogena stuff, 
like i used their makeup pads once but i haven't used any of their like acne washes or anything so i'm quite curious to try it there is also like two neutrogena face masks there is the clay mask for acne prone skin and the peel off mask so i feel like this goodie bag is definitely worth the money because it was quite expensive for like if you're in nigeria it was like 30 something dollars like 36 dollars um, but I paid when there was like a 15% discount and there's like 5k tickets for students But like I was shocked when I got there and I didn't really see anyone I knew Like I knew the video guy, I knew Fisayo, Afwa, Dima, Fisayo's manager And one of the volunteers but I didn't know any of the bloggers There was no Nigerian based blogger there that I knew I feel like I was the only proper Nigerian based like established blogger that was there like there's Alma who came from Toronto there's Ohosa who's based in London it was mostly I just got back I was just saying those accents which was interesting there's this Avino hand mask I didn't know they were hand masks in life there is some um, oil free makeup remover cleansing wipes from Neutrogena so I feel like this is the one product from Neutrogena I've tried. It was some sort of wipe that you like put water on and it foams up. My auntie gave me shot one time. And then there's sunscreen. Okay, yeah, it was definitely worth it. This goodie bag. Because sunscreen is usually like 6.5. Like has the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Kimiko. And that one costs like 6.5. And then there's some liquid highlighter from Neutrogena as well and some blush I like the color so yeah it was a really good really really good goodie bag like let's say these masks are like 1k each this 3k this one's already 65 that's like 10k that's your money back and you get a comb, some teaser, let's give you like a 3k, 13, wipe, 1k, 14, this one, 2k, 16, this one, 4k, 20, it's, it's, it's value for your money, Sha, this goodie bag, and then, yeah, I learned, I learned quite a bit, there wasn't like that much stuff I didn't know before, you know, I've been game for a while, as a blogger, is this YouTube thing, I'm just trying to hack, so, Please make sure you subscribe to my channel, watch my other videos. I post videos on like natural hair, beauty, lifestyle in general, travel, motherhood. I do a lot of motherhood. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the vlog. Hope you enjoyed listening to people's stories. And yeah. Should I actually film you in front of better light? Uh, uh, I see better light over here too.